Hi, my name is Alex and today we will be going for another underdog challenge. I was looking for a one province miner in a really desperate starting position and I thought of knights. And although they are a great country to go for a world conquest, I have a bit of a world conquest burnout. I've just posted a one faith world conquest with Death Martian and I've completed a simple world conquest with Byzantium, which I will post soon. For today, I randomly decided to form Mughals with my knights. Why Mughals, you would ask? Well, you would know from history that Mughals were created by a chieftain coming from Uzbekistan, or rather what now is known as Uzbekistan. His name was Babur, meaning tiger, and he was a descender of both Timur and Cengiz Khan. Now, what's the connection? Well, I was also born in Uzbekistan, and I have always felt a special affection for the Mughal Empire. However, to my shame, I have never formed it in Europa Universalis. So that's the backstory. We begin as knights, and because I woke up feeling nostalgic for Tashkent, we form Mughals. As we do this, we will go for two achievements, King of Jerusalem and On the Roads Again. Because we are going east, we will not be doing Knights of the Caribbean this time. Also, before I start, I wanted to ask for your advice, guys. I usually play these long-form campaigns, either a full world conquest or a setup for one. The videos I make with these campaigns last 40 to 60 minutes and take 2 to 3 weeks to produce. I'm doing this all to be interesting to you, so here is my question to you. Should I continue with these long-form, infrequent videos, or should I change to shorter videos with more frequent posting? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Our starting position as knights is really desperate. I love it. We are perched on a tiny island right next to the Ottomans. And Ottomans, if left unchecked, will quickly become the strongest nation in the game. The Christian world is far in the west. We are surrounded by the powerful Muslim nations and the crumbling remnants of the Eastern Roman Empire. Our internal situation is messed up in a very unique way. The culture of our rulers is Occitan, part of the French culture group, while our population is Greek, a non-accepted culture. The religion of our rulers is Catholic, while our population is Orthodox and non-accepted religion. Our starting mission tree is quite helpful. If we build our fleet to the force limit, we'll get permanent claims on Aleppo and Palestine. If we get at least 150 relations with the Pope, we will get claims on some parts of Greece. Also, we can get Malta if we ally Aragon. That's for later though. The secret to our survival as knights is an aggressive, fast expansion early on. To encourage the Pope to love us, we buy the indulgence. It's only 11 ducats, but it gives plus 75 relations with the Pope. Expansion happens to be an expensive thing, and as knights, we have one thing going for us, or two things in fact. One, we have some choice over our successor, and I like to choose the son of a merchant, simply because he comes with a wad of his father's money. And two, we can raid the coasts of non-Catholic nations, basically we are a band of devout pirates. Since a few patches ago, we now have a special map mode, where blue shows the provinces which we can raid, and in red are the provinces we have just raided. Raiding gives us money, 75 ducats in this case, and sailors, 1029 here. I want to ally at least Venice and Aragon. To start, I can join the trade league led by Venice. To get to 150 relations with the papal state faster, we are rich enough to send them a gift. Soon after that, we complete this mission gaining claims on Byzantium. I tried this start a couple of times, and the Ottomans never declared on Byzantium before me. We are on a clock, of course, but there is no need for a nervous rush to attack Byzantium. I had enough time to build a few more boats and hire some mercenaries. We now load our troops on the boats and position them for a naval attack. Collectively, Byzantium and Athens will have more boats, but we need to remember that in the latest patch, their fleet is quite weak. I have just assigned all the enemy lands as provinces of my critical interest. That because I had allied Venice, and I would love them to join my war. However, they are also interested in these lands. By marking them as my critical provinces, I hope to motivate Venice to give me the occupation. Venice would join my war if I carry at least 10 favors with them. This will take ages. And during this time, I can lose my first move advantage. Let's just go for it and declare on Byzantium. Before that, we ask Venice for their military access so we can land our troops on an island here. We can even ask them for fleet basin rights, this way we can move our troops much faster. And now that we are ready, we declare, ideally when the enemy fleets are away from our landing spot. I was able to cross into Athens unobstructed, and I don't need to fight this naval battle. Although on second thought, I wouldn't mind giving this fort a bit of a barrage. I can barrage with my fleet during a naval battle, I did not know that. Whenever the enemy fleet is away, I put my boats out to blockade. Please note that I had hired an admiral, which makes the enemy less likely to attack my fleet. 
Ok, less than a year to take this fort. We have set a good pace from the start. Unless my memory is failing me, I seem to remember that the Byzantines used to have a fort in Maria. They don't have it anymore. This may mean they had to delete it because they're going bankrupt. Their army is also surprisingly passive behind Constantinople, in that new province. Most likely they don't have military access through the Ottomans anyway, just like their allies the Serbs, who are nowhere to be seen. With these multiple naval battles, I'm trying to weaken their fleet. I always withdraw before I lose any boats, and I immediately put them to repair. The Byzantines, however, are keeping their fleet out in the sea. I'm sure you've noticed that the Ottomans are at war with Albania. I should have enough time to complete this war and take Constantinople also. This is probably the most decisive naval battle of the entire campaign. If we win it, we will be able to land on Constantinople. If we lose, the Turks will have it. And the victory is ours. The enemy fleet loses six boats. And we gain a galley and a transport. All we need to do now is land on the capital and win the siege. Capturing those two boats completes this mission for us. We now have permanent claims in the Holy Land. Look, I am even more convinced now that the Byzantines are bankrupt. I have 5,000 troops sitting on their fort and they are not attacking me. I am shipping my entire army here in the hope that the Serbians still don't have the military access through the Ottoman lands. I have left the entire south of Greece unprotected. Oh, this is not good. The Byzantines now can walk through the Ottomans. I guess so can I. But I am not looking forward to chasing their army in the fog of war. The reason for that is that the Ottomans have finally attacked them. That's a little too late. They cannot occupy any province, but they can get Serbia out of the war for us. Apparently we can enact a decision, until the end of the game it will improve our manpower and garrisons. These are small buffs, but I'll take them. When Constantinople falls, after more than 500 days of siege, the Ottoman fleet fights on our side. I lowered my maintenance and disbanded the extra mercenaries. I had to wait quite a while for the Byzantines to accept my peace offer, because Serbia stubbornly refused to leave the war. But now it's done, we can peace them out. Meanwhile, Venice also declared on Byzantium. This looks like a typical AI feeding frenzy against a weak opponent. This peace did not come a moment too soon, we are on the verge of bankruptcy. By conquering Byzantium, we completed the mission that gives us claims on a lot of the Ottoman lands. We don't need to release Byzantium to fight them, nor would I ever want to do it. If I return to being a one province miner, Byzantium will be hugely disloyal. Plus, lately, they get so many rebellions it's crazy. And finally, had I vassalized them, I would now be at war both with the Ottomans and Venice. We absolutely cannot afford going bankrupt, not in this hostile environment. I need to refinance my country. We got a bit of money from Byzantium in the peace deal. We can use it to pay out some of our 5 ducat loans. I have reached the maximum amount of loans and I cannot take new ones. I am now much bigger than before and my loan cap is also much lower. Desperate times, desperate measures. You saw me debasing my currency. I don't like selling titles usually, but in this case I have to. After I did all that, also fired my advisors, I turned to positive balance and the danger of bankruptcy has disappeared. For now. We should be okay when we can raid again. I set Epirus as my rival because I wanted to attack them before the Ottomans swallowed them up. But now I can see why they are still alive. Allied to Hungary and the Papal State. And Venus will not join my war. Ok, we'll wait. For now, because I've stabilized my economy, I can take the burger loans. They were not available to me when I was at the loan cup. I am starting to feel better about this game. This war was not the best example of my strategic brilliance. I almost went bankrupt. And I was seriously considering a restart. But now, life is good. I have only 5 burger loans and a bit of corruption. Nothing to worry about. This alliance with Aragon is absolutely vital to me. I need to get Malta from them, both for historical and strategic reasons. I do want to move my capital from Rhodes to Malta. Unfortunately for me, they don't really like me enough. Venice is not behaving rationally. They dropped me out of their trade league after I became big, and now they want me to transfer my trade power to them. What? My rulers are changing so frequently, it feels like a revolving door of leadership succession. This time I decided to go for the papal protégé to get some papal influence. And look at him, the best one yet. 356, a shame, he will not last long. Whenever we can raid, we go and raid the unfaithful. This loot has been keeping us afloat financially. When our course complete, we go and full state our territories. We must squeeze every gram of efficiency from our lands. For my second tier government reform, I'm taking the mission on the high seas. Naval warfare and sailors are important for this playthrough. Later on, I may swap it for the extra missionary, I don't know yet. Because I will want to become Mughals, I will need to keep a lot of Muslim provinces. And for the naval doctrine, 
I'm choosing the letter of Mark. It fits with the looting theme of our money making. By now, Epirus lost Hungary as an ally, and I've carried enough favors with Venus to have them join my war and help me handle the Papal State. I'm having rebellions everywhere, including my home island. I don't have many provinces, but I do have a lot of separatists. Hmm, Crimea has sought the Ottoman protection. My main enemy has become even stronger. I got the Papal States out of the war for money, war reparations and some trade power. Although it's in the wrong trade node. As for the fellow crusaders, Epirus, full annexation of course. I am hoping that I will be able to peacefully vassalize Cyprus. Let's see if it works. Aragon here has been super stubborn, refusing to ally me for years. But now I seem to have grown big enough for them to accept my offer of friendship. And just like that we get Malta for free. This will put our capital into an excellent defensive position, not to mention the very powerful monument there. This has also expanded our raiding range. Venice wants me to help them fight Bosnia. I'm going to accept, it will give me quite a few favors. Naples has gone independent, as it usually does, and it doesn't have good allies. I am, of course, fabricating claims against them, so I can attack them as soon as I can. In this war, Venice has taken a lot of land. At this rate, they will soon become a massive threat to me. But for now, they're still helping us out, and they will join our war against Naples. Easy war this one, we can take two full states in Italy. I could have taken even more land, but I didn't want to get coalitioned this early. In principle, I could join HRE, I only need 164 relations with Austria. I am not sure I need it though. For now, I will ally Austria, I will need their help to fight the Ottoman. Ah, everyone is attacking the poor Naples now. Maybe I should have taken more provinces from them. They are in two wars against Aragon and the Papal States. They stand no chance. You know who else is at war? The Ottomans. They are at war with Karaman. My alliance is more than twice as strong as theirs. I feel now is the good time to attack. I have a holy war Casus Belli against them. And usually you should be super careful choosing this Casus Belli against the Ottomans. This early in the game they are known to smash the European armies to smithereens. I'm feeling cocky though, so I'm going with it. Of course we got the crusade effect, it's going to help us a little. A whole lot of mercenary companies are suddenly available for hire. Well, let's see, I may need them. Elsewhere, Burgundy has become a junior partner of France. I hope this doesn't distract Austria from my war. It probably will, won't it? I'm doing the classic blockade and barrage strategy here in the Bosphorus. I want our armies to cross over to the Asian side as soon as possible. Literally all of my allies have strategic interest in the Ottoman lands. They are transferring some occupations to me, but they are keeping most of them for now. The Ottomans are keeping their armies and fleets way out of our reach, and soon enough Austria can cross the strait. For my third government reform I'm taking education for the people, for cheaper ideas. As you know, at this time we quickly unlock three ideal slots, so this will be useful. In case you're interested, for my first idea group I've taken quantity. The question is where are the Ottoman armies and fleets? Since I cannot fight them I cannot get enough war score. Although just as I was talking, the Venetian fleet has won a battle, we need more of that. We can now start getting the Ottoman allies out of this war. Honestly, for me, this war has been a bit of an IT climax. I thought it would be an existential battle, but so far we had only a few engagements with our fleets. I've decided to fill the 100% of my war score with provinces. For money, I'm only taking the war reparations, since if I take cash, it will mostly go to my allies. Well, call me puzzled. This must have been the easiest early war against the Ottomans in my history. I'm not complaining, but I was hoping for something a bit more visually striking for this channel. I have released Karaman from this province in the south, because they have a lot of cores on the Ottomans which I can now reconquer. As in all my campaigns, whenever I can, I lower the autonomy in my newly conquered provinces. My country now is financially stable. I did loan up for the Ottoman war to hire some mercenaries, and now I can pay out my loans. My previous good ruler dies, and the new heir is 6 to 6. With a few exceptions, I don't think I have had a bad ruler this run. We are now playing up there with the big boys, and can ally Poland. Ah, Venice, dragging me into another war against North Italians. I didn't bother helping them, they still got one province from Milan. And Austria wants my help against Bohemia. Sure. More wars like this, more favors. Although I have to note that Austria is becoming really powerful. I have waited out the truce with the Ottomans while quietly improving my country. And this time before the war I'm going to paint everything red as my areas of critical interest. I want to be really careful with whom I invite to join me in this war. 
Aragon and Venus should be sufficient at the start. If this war proves to be difficult, I'll invite my other allies. This one is a straightforward conquest war. As long as we occupy our war target, we will get the war score we need. As a side note, I took Diplomatic as my second idea group. I want cheaper war score. I can stack that with my Malta monument. After occupying the Ottoman provinces on the border with Poland, I feel it's safe enough to invite Poland into this war. They now shouldn't be able to take land for themselves, and with their massive armies, they should make this war super easy. And this time the Ottoman troops do make an appearance. We missed you guys, where have you been? Frequently, the European armies would scatter as soon as the Ottoman troops appear. This time though, we have an overwhelming number advantage. This war lasted only 2 or 3 years. Like before, I only take the war reparations and the maximum amount of provinces within my war score. Karaman gets all of its cores back. I made sure to break the border between the Mamluks and the Ottomans. And we immediately declare on the Mamluks. Only Aragon will join me in this war, but together we are twice as strong as the enemy alliance. Really unsure why the Mamluks didn't attack me here. They have almost twice as many troops and I'm sitting on a fort. I guess they're programmed to go after a weak opponent. In this case it means they have split their armies and took half of their forces out of active battles by parking them on top of a caravan fort. Alright, let's see how long they last with these tactics. I am a little worried that the Aragon's armies are not showing up. Just to feel a bit safer, I have decided to loan up and get some mercenaries. That did it. Two years later, we have dealt enough damage to sign the peace deal, all the while fighting a massive wave of rebellions up north. I am taking some money from them and the line of provinces all the way down south to Alexandria. I also took Jerusalem for my missions. With this, we have pretty much destroyed our two biggest Muslim rivals, the Ottomans and the Mamluks. They had the potential to create problems for us, but with them dealt, I feel pretty secure on my eastern flank. We have apparently successfully completed the crusade for Jerusalem. We get stability, prestige, papal influence and a mercenary company. And we also have restored the order of the knights hospitalers. We get some army morale and national manpower until the end of the game. We can now annex Karaman. They have been very helpful, but I prefer to own this land directly. We can take the integration policy to help us out a bit. Venice had broken their alliance with us because they wanted some of our lands, but now they are ready to ally us again. Go figure, they are not behaving rationally. After coring Jerusalem, we get this new decision. Re-establish the kingdom of Jerusalem. We'll get new ideas and a new government reform. Other than that, I think it's a cosmetic change. Let's click it and find out if anything changes. I just took a look at the Paradox Wiki and decided to keep the Knights ideas. While the Jerusalem ideas focus a lot on conversion, my current ideas are more balanced for winning battles on land and at sea. I wanted to mention that we have now gotten both achievements we were after. When our truce with Ottomans expires, we immediately attack. They have a large alliance, but so do we. I don't want to give them any chance at recovery, nor do I want Austria to conquer their land in the west. I didn't want Austria to declare their own war on the Ottomans, so I invited them into my war. But first, I occupied all the Ottoman provinces on their border. I mean, usually the Ottomans is this boogeyman and a major boss at every stage of the game. But somehow, in this game, they are my weakest opponent so far. The Mamluks have put up a much fiercer fight. My only problem with them is their size. It's already my third victory against them and I still need a few wars. In 1516 we can take the colonialism institution, I developed a little bit for it, but it has mostly naturally spread into my lands through Italy, because I have excellent relations with Aragon. The second war against the Mamluks should be much easier than the first one. My alliance now has three times more troops than theirs. I am starting to feel rather unstoppable here in my corner of the world. Despite my horrible religious unity, only 45%. I am not really converting provinces, I prefer putting them into trade companies instead. Ideally, I want to come to the point when I have 50-50 in terms of development between my Muslim and Catholic provinces, or as close to that as I can get, so I can flip to Sunni to become Mughals and then become Catholic again. Yep, this war wasn't a real challenge. I keep taking the Mediterranean coast and forts. I have also split the Mamluks in two, just to make their life more difficult. When Karaman gets integrated, we are starting to get visible on the map. We now also have four traders, because I have been very intentional dominating the trade here in the Eastern Mediterranean. I simply dump all my provinces into trade companies. It may not be super optimized, but it works. 
our new adversary is Karako Yunlu with a small band of allies. As you see, I keep pushing east in the Persian lands. I have just noticed they have only one level 1 capital fort. They seem to have conquered Georgia and other small nations in Caucasus, but they must be too poor to maintain any forts. As for me, I have enough spare money to start building manufactories. In fact, them having no forts makes it difficult for me to quickly get enough war score. And instead of prolonging this war, I'm just going to take a couple of provinces, from which I can release Armenia and Iraq. These two countries have a lot of cores in QQ, which I can later reconquer. Because I'm making so many conquests in the Muslim lands, while being Catholic myself, I have to be quite careful of coalitions. My diplomats are always out there improving relations with my Muslim neighbors. And you see, in my next war, I can take all these provinces at only 25% aggressive expansion. I have to give it to the Ottomans, they're pretty resilient. Our truce with them has expired and before they and QQ go at war with each other, I'm going for my scheduled attack. They no longer have any strategic depth to their territory and I was able to find the army at once this time. With my massive ally swarm, we overwhelmed them and their allies in no time. I got the allies out of the war just for some money, and even though it's my war number 5 against them I think, and in each war I took 100% war score, there is still a lot of provinces to take. This is how it feels to play without any admin efficiency whatsoever. It's now 1534, after starting as a one province miner, on a small island with the wrong culture and wrong religion, I believe we have carved out for ourselves a nice piece of land to live on. I will end this video here, like I mentioned in the beginning, I'm trying this new format of shorter, faster videos. Please leave a comment to let me know what you think about it. I will be very happy to edit and post the second part of this campaign. If we get, let's say, 500 likes on this first video, this way I will know that you are interested and this is relevant to you.